Yeah, I can start, yeah. They're late, too bad. <laughs> and we keep on time, otherwise it throws everything off. Go for it. You're gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna choose from here? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. We're gonna start the session today. Our first speaker is Dr. Sam Lamb. He's talking about micro-blocker and boxing and micro-hyaluronic acid injection. Thank you very much. So I went across this photo in the New York Times and it really encapsulates a lot of what I want to talk about today. The first part of the talk will be more qualitative and appreciation of the full spectrum of what botulinum toxin can provide. And then of course all of you want to know techniques so we will, I will provide that information toward the end. This is a 53 year old lady that when I first look at her I can see that the upper third is incredibly youthful because you know that she's been receiving botulinum toxin for probably a decade. But the rest of the face doesn't look youthful. So the question is, is it just a wrinkle issue? There's so much more going on here. Pores, texture, tone, structure, even dyschromias, even the structure of that upper face has changed. So how do you get the rest of the face to look like that? Is it just lasers? Well, that's traditionally how we've looked at it. But in the last couple of years, I've been on an odyssey of thinking and looking at this in a different way. And I hope I challenge you and you guys will provide me more answers than I can, I can give you. So this is a lady that is a Korean lady that I, at 61 years of age, had not started uh, botulinum toxin. And then she, came, she, went, she did two years with me every few months, came back two years later, and I said, did you get a laser? Did you get some, these little lesions burned off? She says, no. All of this, I'm very convinced, it's not even skincare products, she, says she wasn't even using skincare products. All of it has been rectified through some kind of cytokine cellular uh, restoration and, and botulinum toxin has been proven to actually work on collagen synthesis. And so these are things that I want you to think about is the progressive healing nature of botulinum toxin. Uh, I'll just call it BTX for short so we'll be agnostic in terms of the terminology. But this is another fascinating component which I've really been focused on. So when I do uh, anything outside of the face I will put a little bit of BTX into the area about a week out and it really modulates scars. This is a gentleman that actually has a uh, hypertrophic scar that I couldn't fix with KTP laser. I did a couple rounds for him, he's only 25 years old, he thought I was crazy and it just melted away. So I think this is, when you're looking at scars, I think that in terms of frank keloids, you're gonna have a hard time really regressing and that's actually been shown in studies that there's some benefit in, in keloids, but not at a significant measure. But in terms of just hypertrophic scars, different types of scar issues, uh, I've seen it even in mature scars that are a year or two old uh, out, but it certainly works more favorably in, some, in, in a more acute setting. And I think it works through transforming growth factor beta one. Of course, everyone knows about wrinkles. I don't need to go into it. This is a lady that I did fillers on as well as some slimming. And it just really makes that face look so much better when you can do masteric uh, injections, which most people know about. So I'm not gonna uh, really delve into it. But this is a lady that's actually gained 10 pounds and she still looks slimmer um, by, by doing this treatment of uh, masseteric uh, BTX. This is uh, acne. Um, you know, this is a recalcitrant cystic acne. A lady did not want to take um, uh, isotretinoin, and, and this I did about three rounds on her using this meso technique that I'll be discussing. And almost a year later, she hasn't had recurrence of the uh, acne. So it's pretty profound. And I, I just this first part of the t uh, lecture is really trying to encourage you to think outside the box. And before we even get into the details. Acute and chronic pain, I, I find that neurologists, and no offense if anyone's in the room as a neurologist, way over inject uh, the, the quantity per unit of botulinum toxin. I, what I, I ask my patient is where is the pain? I had a lady with chronic pain from a lipoma excision done somewhere else. I just literally put the, a, a few units in, pulled it out, and the pain was gone. You said that's gotta be psychosomatic, but it's happened so many times. Uh, finger pain, neck pain, oftentimes that pain is extinguished extremely quickly and it's, it's I, I do not believe it's some kind of acetylcholine response, something else is going on. And if you've got some people with some kind of acute chronic pain and that can be focused with a finger, I encourage you to try it. I've done patients that had uh, chronic pain from bad hair transplant uh, uh, scars. I go in there and I extinguish the pain with a few injections over a few months. Of course, migraines, everyone knows about that already. 
uh, I had a facelift uh, from, I remember 13 years ago, I tried putting some uh, bupivacaine, everything, it wouldn't fix it. I put a little bit of uh, botulinum toxin, gone in a couple hours, and it didn't even come back, the pain. So these are things that I just want you to think about. So if there's any message uh, of underlying philosophical constraint here will be the fact that botulinum toxin is a profound healing agent, which is almost ironic because everyone doesn't want to do it because it's some kind of toxin, right? But I think the word healing is the word that I always uh, express to my patients. So let's get to the meat of the talk. How do you do meso or micro botulinum toxin? So this is something that a couple of years ago, you know, I sit, sift through 60, 70 lectures and I get this one pearl that just changed my thinking. I saw a photo, these are all my before and afters, but I saw this photo and I said, wow, I got to try this. So I started with the face and migrated to the neck and chest and now I'm actually doing more neck and chest. But there are some limitations and positives, uh, pros and cons and, and how I combine it that I want to get into. So we're going to first talk about the face. I don't always get I I entire uh, wrinkle elimination, but you know, when you get to this severe grade gradation of wrinkles, you can't inject it with normal levels of BTX because you're going to get a zygomaticus uh, in, uh, encroachment and it's going to be a problem. Well, if you look at her, her smile is not full, but what's interesting is the wrinkle um, reduction is sustained after a few months, but the, the, the smile returns. So I always tell my patients if, if for about three to six weeks, and I have one lady over two months, where the smile is slightly not as full, and that's something you need to convey to them. Uh, that's very, very important. And, but it's something profound. And the other thing that I've noticed, and this is a, something that I think as a surgeon, you would poo poo uh, looking at me when I make this next comment, but I look at my patients somewhere starting three months out from a treatment, sometimes up to a year, year and a half after one treatment of this meso botulinum toxin in the face. And if they have a gaunt face, it looks like I added several fillers in their lateral face, which is an area I'm very passionate about putting fillers in. There's something structurally that changes to the shape of the face. And my point of saying this earlier is that I can't mm -hmm. capture it on a photo. I'm looking at them going, I see them 20 feet away. I'm blown out of my mind how good they look. The shape is there, but I can't mm -hmm. capture it on a photograph. If I put it before and after, you're going to think Sam's crazy. But maybe I am. I don't know. I see these things and it just blows my mind. So um, just showing you, it doesn't get rid of all wrinkles. And if you try to sell this as a complete uh, right at effacement, I think you're going to get some disappointed patients. But there's improvement. And I believe just like what you're doing with botulinum toxin in the upper face, there is something stacking with this that over time there is progressive healing. And you can see again, this is a 30-year-old, there's improvement when she's got significant uh, rididosis for her age bracket because of prior uh, sun exposure. There's improvement but not elimination. And this is a lady that I would love to show your whole face because it's insanely awesome with one treatment. This all, these are all one treatment I'm showing you, by the way. Uh, and it just almost looks like I lasered her skin. And it's more profound if I show you the whole face, but of course I, have, I don't have the consent for that. Uh, with this, the um, this smile is is not as robust, and you and I just underline that a lot five times. So if someone's going to get married and they want some of these wrinkles treated, I don't do it. it. I mean, soon if they're like many months away, yes. And in fact, I would just be so uh, cautionary and say, even up to three months, just be cautious. If they're going to get married within three months, don't do it. You know, I always you know this is just an elective procedure. I do, I certainly don't want upset patients, and of course all of you have them. I have them too. So we just want to be more conservative. So here's a summary, okay? That I just have points that I've, I've mentioned. If uh, you can take photos of anything, um, Jacqueline asked me to, to let you know what you can take photos of. You can take photos of anything that doesn't have a before and after on it. Um, and so you can, it does limit the smile. I'm just repeating some salient points. Does not eliminate all wrinkles. It can take up to six weeks to see a, see a result and can last a long time. I tell them to repeat it every four to six months or so. And that facial shape change in the gaunt face is just really quite incredible. So this is neck and chest. I sort of think as a, as a continuum. This is a 71-year-old neck, one treatment. This is a 30-year-old chest, one treatment. And you can sort of see that in a 30-year-old, there is an improvement in those necklines. 50-year-old, there's something qualitatively better. These are all one treatment photos, about, about four to six weeks out from the treatment, 60-year-old. 65 year old and 70, 70, 71 year old actually, but who's counting a year. And there's just something different with it. And what I'm really doing now with this treatment is not looking at, at it as a uh, isolated modality. I'm really combining it with a lot of different things. And so what am I doing? Uh, I am combining it with brighteners, 
Uh, and I've, I really have found that uh, hydroquinone that is freshly mixed in the office truly provides profound differences compared to things that are pre-mixed before and with uh, mesohyaluronic acid, which I'm new to it. So this talk, even though it's titled both of those things, I'm very new to that, only probably about six months into it, but I'm seeing some really good changes with that as well. So you can see with the chest as a 50-year-old, uh, all these are all one treatments about four to six weeks post. This is combining uh, one session of mesohyaluronic acid as well as this uh, hydroquinone mixed uh, um, product. And you can just see an improvement of 50-some-year-old neck. This is a 53-year-old, one treatment about a month out from the Brightener plus one session of mesobotulinum toxin. And I think you can see some improvement. So summary here is that it's great if combined with other modalities. I always suggest combining these modalities. Um, and it does not get rid of everything, okay? This is not a facelift. And if, if, if uh, I always try to underscore that, and it takes a while to see the result. And I like to always add these other components uh, that I'm mentioning. And I always say that um, it, for me personally, I've not found great success in lasers in the neck because I can't turn the energies up and I'm always worried about scarring. So that's why this has been, using these multimodality therapies in this lower neck chest area has just been f fantastic in my hands. So what is the technique? That's all what you guys want to know. I basically use, and I have no financial affiliation with these companies, uh, own a uh, botulinum toxin, occasionally I use Inco. Um, I have not tried the pra uh, Prabo in there yet. And I, for me, I just, because I don't use uh, Abo botulinum toxin in the face, I wind up really not just using it in the neck or chest. There's no personal bias against it, except I can't get great success with it in the upper face that the hand injection is still better because I can put a, a massive volume in here. Whereas when I use a, a meso gun type thing, I, it's just uh, actually, believe in it, more laborious for me to get the quantities I need to make and affect the change that I'm looking for. So the patient gets pre-numbed oftentimes for about 45 minutes, standard your cocktail of choice for topical uh, anesthesia. And then I just use a, a couple of vibration devices and inject it subcutaneously at the pattern that you see. Uh, meso HA, I use a meso gun to inject this with, um, and you can see that it's pretty brain dead easy to inject it, to be honest with you. The vacuum holds it in position and there's minimal leakage. This is why other techniques, and I won't mention any uh, products per na by name, but a lot of other techniques that I've, I've looked at stamping it has too much bleeding of the product. In other words, the product just goes all over the, the skin, and I think that's quite ineffective. So I want something that I can really get through the skin and stay there. These are my settings uh, for the Meso HA. I'm about 1.4, I can go to 1.6. A, a lot to do with uh, pain tolerance. And then I injected, uh, you again, you can take a photo of this if you like. Um, so the Meso HA technique that I do is, it's four milliliters non-crosslinking HA. I mix it with one cc of 2% plain lidocaine. I inject with 1.4 millimeter depth, and I repeat it uh, every, basically every month three times, and then every three months thereafter to maintain it. And I'm also a big passionate fan of radio frequency microneedle. I think that the combination of that with um, the mesobotulinum toxin, the meso HA, the brightener that I said is sort of my tetrafecta, if you will, of making the neck and chest look good. And even after a rhinodectomy, I still believe that the skin is still not e e effectively managed, especially in the lower third and into the chest area. And so that's an area that I find, even post rhinodectomy, this to be an incredibly good complement. And as I showed you that first slide, I want you to have that captured and emblazoned your brain, is how that upper third, because of repeated botulinum toxin injection, starts to migrate away from the lower third of the face and the neck and chest. And there's a separation that you have, you, I don't think you can even catch up with a, a laser. I always use the analogy, if you iron a shirt and wear it, it's gonna get wrinkled again, right? Well, that's the analogy is if I laser something and then I move it or smile and frown, it's gonna get worse. But there's something in a profound nature that botulinum toxin does in terms of healing of the skin. So I, 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 these are just some of the key takeaway points. Um, and uh, I just encourage you to, to do something cooler than I'm doing. And maybe you're going to get better results. And I would love for you to feed back to me what you're doing. And then we can share information together. So I appreciate your time. Yeah.